This is no Zaku, boy. No Zaku. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get on to the review. How's it going, guys? This is Plastic Disaster, and today we're going to do the review of the high grade Universal Sentry or HGUC Guff. This mobile suit came from the very first Gundam series called Mobile Suit Gundam. Uh, I am a huge fan of the first Gundam series. It stars the iconic Gundam right here. It has great characters and great mobile suits designs and even like memorable names too. I mean my memorable names is that going back to the uh, great mobile suit designs it says that they're so simple that you can just easily recognize them just as the gun cannon also from the original Gundam series. If you ever get a chance, you should try watching the original Gundam series. Now, I know it may not appeal to some modern audience, but if you are in the mood for something classic, like I said, give it a watch. It's like over 40 episodes. Starting off the box art, we have the guff tearing some metal apart. It could be the shield from the Gundam, and it's got some really nice, like, you know, sand, like, weathering all over it. And we got like two Zakus in the background. Hopefully I get them later. Just to be clear, I was talking about the standard Zaku, not the uh, Zaku 2 F2 from a different kind of series. Taking a look at the bottom left corner, the kit is made in 2016, so I'm hoping for some good things out of this kit. Moving on to the side of the box. Now if you see this white box right here, that just says this kit was like a revive of the very, very old uh, HGUC Guff, which is number nine online. And as you can tell right here, and this is number 196, so they come long ways to go. There's the front and the back shot of the, what the kit's gonna look like, and some cool action poses, some nice gimmicks, and the weapon sets. Moving on to the other side of the box, on the right we got some pretty cool art, and on the left we got some stats of the guff. Cracking things open. We got one, two, three bags and the manual. By taking a look at the instruction manual, here's what the guff's gonna look like when it's all painted up and the stats over here in English. All right, so cracking the instruction manual open, these are the poses that we saw on the side of the box and here's what interests me. When we look right here, it looks like we're gonna have very few parts if you see an X on them. I know it sounds like a broken record, but if you see an X on the part, which means it's just gonna be like a spare part and you're not gonna use it on the kit. Moving on to the back of the manual, we get to see two different poses. The same art we saw on the side of the box and a color guide if you're gonna paint it. Starting off with runner A, it's gonna be an all blue runner. We have parts for the head, the shoulder, and the top parts for the knee. Runner B is gonna be the parts that we can see for the arm joints and the knee joints. Runner C is gonna be another blue runner, which is gonna be the parts for the arms, I'm guessing the thighs, shoulder parts, and the feet, oh, and the shield too. And I forgot to mention about the uh, hand parts as well. Okay, runner D is gonna be an all dark blue runner. We have parts for the torso, the side skirts, the shield, and the bottom part of the torso as well. All right, runner E is gonna be dark gray. Now I have to shine the light on it to make it a little brighter. We have parts for the bottom part of the feet, part of the torso, and we got the uh, handles for the sword. If you look right here, this is the part for the head right here. I know you couldn't see it, but see that little circle? This is where you're gonna place that sticker, which I am gonna show you later. Runner F is going to be the uh, orange translucent parts. We have parts for the uh, the sword right here and the another orange translucent piece, which is kind of similar to the Gov Custom like I showed you last time. Here is Runner G1 that is gonna be in uh, some kind of rubber plastic, and this is gonna be the part for the heat wire. Runner G2 is gonna be another blue runner. It's, for, it's gonna be for the uh, posing parts. Runner I is gonna be the last blue runner, so we're gonna have parts for the, I guess you wanna call it the hand cannon, literally. And we have parts for the legs, another parts for the shield, and more parts for the hand cannon. And strangely enough, another parts for the head. We have the usual small polycap runner. Last but not least, a sticker. Well. I guess this is okay if you are going to use this because you're going to put this on your eye anyway and you top coat it, it's not going to peel off so I'm not too mad about that but I'm just going to paint my, my, my uh, go with the pink guy instead. Alright now after taking a look at all the runners, 
I'm gonna have a good time with this thing. I've heard really good things about this kit and I'm gonna keep my hopes up. I am going to snap this together right now and I'll see you right after the build. Guys, so while I was building the guff, uh, <laughs> this happened. Yeah, so the thing is like the metal, like right here, if you look closely, it broke and the nippers aren't supposed to be like this. But luckily, I went to my local hobby shop and bought these kind of nippers. Now, they're called entry nippers, like it says right here. They're basically um, nippers for beginners. Even though I've been building Gunpla for a couple of years now, I'm curious how this is gonna go. Because in the back, it does show some promises. So, I'm kind of curious. And also, these are smaller than these uh, regular nippers. This thing lasts me for like a little bit over two years and um, it's time to say goodbye to my old friend. Anyways, it's time for me to go back and snap the guff up and I'll tell you how these nippers go. And here is what the guff is gonna look like when it's all snapped together. And I gotta say, I had a good time putting it together despite what happened to my old nippers. And speaking of which, these nippers work like any other nippers, which is not a bad thing. Hopefully this will last me the next few years. Anyways, back to the Guff, like I mentioned on the previous Guff I reviewed, which is the Guff Custom, go check that out. Um, you are working with dark plastic, so it's gonna show some pretty bad nubs if you're not being careful. Now, as for seam lines, there's gonna be some right here on the shoulders, which is pretty common for the high grade. And um, there's gonna be a seam line like right over here. And this is what the back is gonna look like. And overall, I guess the seam lines are pretty unnoticeable. Before I start, you know, uh, detail painting and pen line and top coat it, I'm gonna show you that you do have extra parts right here to make the uh, different version of the head. So I went with this one with the uh, longer snout because it's more anime accurate, while this one, it has a little shorter snout. You is that uh, this is actually based off from another kit called the uh, Guff R35, which uses these parts. So it's up to you if you want to go with the longer snout or the shorter snout. Okay, that's enough of me rambling and I will see you guys later once I do some work on this. This is what the Guff is gonna look like when he's all painted up. And I even went a little further and do some weathering on him. Only that, and you see that little orange right there, I painted uh, white so it makes it brighter. Now, if you want to put in like minimal effort but still make it look nice on the shelf let me show you what areas you can paint in these side thrusters right here either black or gray and since there's two of them on each leg all you gotta do is just fill in four of them and you just have to paint pink right here on the mono y and that's pretty much it minimal effort oh and who wouldn't forget the back of the shield and since we're on accessories here is a shield and I even went in and painted as well. The right hand options, here you can see there is a closed fist and right here you have a weapon holding hand. And as for the left hand, you can see there's also a weapon holding hand and there's another one that's more articulated. It's like a hinge right here and a little bit of a ball joint on the thumb. Now let's say that you don't like the big left hand. Well, don't worry, there's options for that too. You have the left hand for the closed fist and the weapon holding hand. And here we have the heat wire. I tried to pose it however I like, but it's not really cooperating with me, which is one of the uh, issues I had with it. This is false advertising, zero out of 10. For the last accessory, here you have two heat swords, one for the left and one for the right. Now the thing is in the anime, it only uses one, but if you want to make a dual wield, it's up to you. And if you want to store the uh, sword handle, you can take off the, uh, the clear piece from the sword, take the handle and this up, put it on the shield right here. And that's how you store it. And to put the shield on the guff, you can put, you can peg this into any of these arms or have them hold it by this handle right here. And just for the hell of it, you can store this on the back, even though it doesn't say it on the manual or it doesn't show it on the uh, box. All right, so for articulation, the head is on a double ball joint. And the mono eye can move side. Oops, 
come on. To side, there we go. The arm is on a ball joint as well. It could swing forward and a little bit backwards. This is on a hinge and on a slight rotation. There's a, there's a bicep swivel right here. The arm can bend more than 90 degrees and the wrist is on a ball joint as well. And the arm can move up that far. Now, due to design, you may not get a lot of movement, but at least you do get some. So there's like a limited swivel right here. Not much of an ab crunch. But if you try to move it back, this is gonna happen. For front skirts, this is how far it's gonna move. Side skirts doesn't move that far. Back skirt is gonna be in fixed position because it's very common for a high grade. The legs can move up that far, move back that far, which is not bad. Can move to the side this far. Thigh swivel right here double bend at the knee and as for the ankle it can move that far up move back just a little bit and it's also a ball joint so you get a, a pretty small pivot as for the backpack you don't get any moving thrusters so overall the articulation is actually good using the heat wire is going to be exclusively for the right arm which is why I use the the right weapon holding hand to use it and you just simply plug it in like this just like that okay and here is what the cup is going to look like with the heat wire and I even swap out the left hand for the open one and as you can see I even brought in the original Gundam which actually looks pretty nice together and there was some dioramas that was already created with the original Gundam going up against the guff. So here is the guff holding the shield by the handle rather than the side arm. I mean, don't get me wrong, I really do like this pose, but the next pose I'm going to show you, it's one of my favorites. This is my favorite pose, and man, with the weathering on this thing, it really helps a lot. Before I move on to the uh, size comparison and my final thoughts, I just want to do like one more pose with another mobile suit from the same Gundam series. And to make it even better... <laughs> oh wow, all three of them actually look really great together. Now here is a size comparison with two other mobile suits from the same Gundam series, which would be the RX-78 II and the Gun Cannon. And I gotta say, they're all pretty much the same height. All right, let me just get these two out of the way. And here he is next to another fellow Zeon, Sharzaku 2. And something I've always wanted to do Here he is with the Gov Custom. Well, in my opinion, I do like the Gov Custom more than the uh, regular Gov, but you really gotta give it to the regular Gov because without that one, we wouldn't got the Gov Custom. But if you do have a different opinion, let me know in the comments below. I forgot to show you that you can put it on the action base, but anyways, here are my final thoughts. It's a nice kit overall, though, it may not be appealing to everyone. And like I mentioned earlier, I do not have the original HD guff, so I cannot make a proper comparison, but I do know that it is better than the old one in every way. You know the kit it was like from 2016. It still really holds up to this day. And what I could have done with the heat wire, I could have put it in like a warm water so you can like bend it and pose it very easily. So I should have done that. So if you like what you see, or if you're a fan of the original Gundam series, or just a Xeon fan in general, I say pick this one up. You'll probably like it just like I did. All right guys, thank you for watching this video. Please check out my channel if you wanna see other reviews. And don't forget to leave a comment and a like as well. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. You guys are not tired with one-eyed robots, right? 
stay tuned. So uh, about the false advertising thing, I take it back. <laughs>